Iranian criminal sentenced to being forcibly blinded. Earlier this month, it was reported that a court wow, in Tehran, different. Iran, sentenced a man to be forcibly blinded. The unidentified man stands accused of blinding his neighbor during a fight in 2018. According to the victim, the accused stabbed him in the eye, causing irreparable damage. Quote, I have suffered a lot in these four years, and I have no intention of forgiving, the victim said. The sentencing shows the use of, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, uh, Kisas. Uh, or Kisas. Kisas. Oh, Kisas. Oh, my, I can't make that noise. <laughs> An Islamic principle that calls for a punishment equal to the inflicted damage. This principle operates similarly to the biblical phrase in the book of Leviticus, an eye for an eye. Oftentimes, victims will accept blood money as compensation for the harm they endured instead of pursuing literal physical retribution. These rulings are highly controversial in Iran and internationally condemned by human rights groups. I was sure I, I had no idea this was a thing in Iran. Are we sure this is this is legit news? Mm -hmm. This was reported by Radio Free Europe. Um, what's interesting wow. is that since 1979, there are only two occasions of the forced blindings actually being enforced. There's been many times where these like eye for an eye rulings get brought forward, but usually victims will either forgive the person who's been sentenced or they, like I said, will accept um, financial compensation. Um, but this is so barbaric. according so to bar this yeah. form of Islamic law, like if the, the victim has the final say. And so if they don't forgive and they really want this to happen, um, they can. One of the the article profiled this woman who was blinded back in the early 2000s with acid. And that was uh, got a lot of international attention because um, she wanted to go forward with blinding her um, perpetrator uh, or the, the perpetrator of the violence against her. And she ended up forgiving him, but he was going to be sentenced to be blinded. In fact, with acid also being poured in his face. And she was serious? even going to do it to him at one point or said that she wanted to. So in the two oh, rulings wow. where it actually has been enforced, which I think was 2015 and 2016 or thereabouts. So like recently, um, they like actually do what, what what that person did so like there was one guy whose eyes would were was gouged out and while he was unconscious doctors gouged out one of his eyes and then there was another guy who blinded a four-year-old girl with lime not like like the green fruit like the the chemical material with the calcium mm -hmm. he blinded a young girl that way and so, in turn, I think they blinded him in a similar manner. Jesus Christ. Um, what would you... What if the victim wanted the, the eyes to be gouged Well, he's not unconscious, given that they were... Like, given that their eyes were... They were blinded when they were awake. I don't know. Well, so... Yeah. The article also talked about how it's really difficult to find doctors who will actually do this because when they're carrying out the sentence, they can't just go attack the person like in the way that they attacked someone else. No, like you have a medical professional that's going to like administer this. Um, but it's, re it's really difficult to find doctors who do it. So this is complete speculation, but maybe the doctors were like, we're not going to do this at the minimum. He has to be unconscious. I don't know. Okay. Um, what what would you say to somebody that might think like this is a good thing because these people were horrible people that did horrible things, and they might actually be like this is kind of based. They like the fact that this is happening to these men. What would you respond to that? Um, I think retributive justice 
is can be really dangerous. Like it, I think it's bad for society um, to enforce law and punishment in this way. One, because you're like completely crippling that person's ability to like provide for themselves, uh, potentially depending on like what the injury or whatever calls for. Um, and over, I mean, if this was something that happened often, like that could really fuck up like your, your whole country's and society's potential. Like if this is how you enact justice on each other. Um, it's also so cruel and it's torture. <laughs> I don't support that. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I mean, the, the problem is that a lot of people might be like, yeah, and like he can't make money anymore. Like, and then he might say like, yeah, and well, he deserves it. And like, and some people are like, oh, it's torture. Like, yeah, and he tortured somebody else. So people might keep justifying this. The way, the way I respond is that the justice system is not supposed to be there to satisfy our sense of our, our desire for revenge. That's not the point of justice system. The justice system should be, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be the point of the justice system. The justice, the point of it should be to protect society, um, and allowing torture, you know, unusual punishment and torture, even if it might satisfy your urge to see somebody pay for their crimes, has not been the best way to run a civilized society. You know, it's a society that is based on values that makes the society grow as as a whole. The justice system is supposed to, the person that uh, is to protect society from the elements within, within society that causes harm, and it should do the minimum that is required to r remove the person that is causing harm to society from society. As long as you eliminate the threat, anything extra is just something that you want for being, for enjoying someone else's pain rather than just making sure there's no more harm that can be done from that person. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like even, I think even the people who have committed the worst crimes, if you could put them in prison um, and forever, for example, um, and they can't do any harm to society, it doesn't, we shouldn't want them to suffer while they're in jail, even if they have done the worst things, right? Um, some people might say like, well, no, they need to suffer uh, so that other people are, um, you know, reluctant to do something like that. They, they learn from it. To, you can see the consequences. However, above, like there are studies that shows that above a certain punishment, it doesn't have that effect on the, the, a lot of the people that do commit these crimes do not get discouraged. Um, like, again, there's a lot of studies on this, right? I mean, and even if you could show that it does discourage people, that should be the reason why we do punish people not because we desire revenge, that we desire them to suffer, right? That is not a healthy society to be living in. Anyways, that's my whole argument. Um, I don't want to continue. I but, think that was absolutely yeah. perfect. Oh, okay. Thank you. I yeah. That. I was like, you are correct. That is a much better argument than what I put forward. <laughs> <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.